Okay, I've got five o'clock, so I'll go ahead and call the monthly meeting of the Harford City Council to order on October the 24th. Uh, we'll open with a word of prayer. Father, we come to you tonight with a uh, thankful heart for every day of life that we have. We're thankful, Father, for just the weather we are encountering. And Father, we just pray that you uh, guide us tonight as we try to make decisions for the people of Hartford that be in the best interest of all. And we just ask for your wisdom, Father. And thank you for this opportunity to do that. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. 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 Okay, any visitors want to speak tonight? I just this show first. Don't okay. Get, don't get <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll take a look at the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, see if anybody has any questions, comments. Uh, we're making deletions or additions. I can make a motion to accept the minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? second. I'll I'll say I got eight motion. It matter. Okay. Yes. All in favor of accepting minutes as they're printed, uplifted hand. Thank you. Motion carried. Let the minutes uh, record the uh, arrival of our distinguished city. Make sure it says distinguished, please. In the minutes. <laughs> all right uh we got a lot to do tonight all right so take a look at the finances and when you feel comfortable with that i'll entertain a motion to accept the financials as they've been presented tonight <coughs> make a motion to accept the financial statements okay any discussion regarding those? I had a, I did have a question, George, on the, the chemicals and the chemical analysis. It looks like there was a, a, a swing. Is that? This is was that water. A, yeah, on the water. Looks like we, chemical cost was double, and so I don't know if it was like two months. No, there's some time period. So. Or, Periodically, they'll have to take a shipment that may last for three months, six months, and things like that. Okay. So that's this periodic thing that happens. Um, actually, our chemicals should be a lot lower now because we, uh, they, they're constantly searching for the best price and um, trying to monitor the use of them, you know, uh, and doing it. A diligent job at it and so if you see an inflated cost it's just because it's a multi-month multi purchase okay. it, it's outrageous what we have to pay for chemicals I mean it's something that can be helped you know they actually are doing an outstanding job we've our last uh, our last analysis uh, was they had prepared for a couple of weeks getting ready to take the sample and with flushing and everything and so uh, they took the sample and they were real thrilled with what they thought they were going to get back for analysis and went to the company and their machine broke down so they had come back and had taken another sample of course, they didn't find out till later on, and so they had to take another sample. But fortunately, they both turned out uh, well within the limits. So we're very pleased with the progress of the quality of water we have. Any other questions about the finances? Have a motion and a second. All in favor, with uplifted hand. Okay, thank you. Motion carried. All right. Uh, Sarah, we passed you up, so it's up to you now. You're going to 
Do your thing, or are you going to wait till later? Or? I didn't know if you had this on the, I didn't get to pick up my packet earlier, but it's, yeah, it's on there. is it on there? Mm -hmm. Then then we can take care of it when we get there. Okay. Uh, we'll open the floor for old business then at this time. Um, you said something about wanting to maybe discuss the KLC. Yeah, so plan. yeah, when I looked at the plan, I was wondering what this was encompassing because it didn't call out is this the option two or the option three. Okay, what we're what we decided on last at the last meeting was option two with mm -hmm. the uh, express purpose of seeing if we could go into three, mm -hmm. you know, which we can. Okay, and, and so then this is the scope of work for option two. Uh, this is what you had sent us, I think. Yeah, that's a brief thing, a brief description of it. Uh, okay. I don't know that if we've received the detail, and I've talked with her about it, you know, uh, and we'll we'll find out more about it once it gets started, uh, about, like, uh, how many meetings, you know, who all should be at the meetings, different things like that. Mm -hmm. They're looking at starting in February. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, I'm sure we'll get more detail then about the step by step that they have planned. But and it seems like I've seen a better description of this. I may have. This, I mean, this was pretty good because it shows it has okay. eight meetings yeah. and what all is going to be covered and when. Yes. And yeah, I think the difference between two and three may be the finished product. We. Yeah. You know, okay. getting that final brochure mm -hmm. in color and, you know, everything. What was uh, the price tag on The uh, plan two was about 7000 and then plan three was about 10000 I thought it was ten and fifteen. That's what I thought. It was yeah, That's yeah. I'm thinking it was ten, yeah. seven, ten, fifteen. Okay. If I remember right. No, the first one was a thousand. Okay. It's number one is a thousand. Hmm. It's in the minutes there. Yeah, number the one's a thousand, number two seven thousand, and the other one's like ten to fifteen, I think. Okay. Well, seven to ten for the second. Seven to ten for the second, yeah. and then the other one's fresh. They say about fifteen thousand. Okay. Any more discussion about that? Uh, okay. Then, if there's none, then we'll proceed to new business. Um, First item of new business you have in your packet. It's the next to last page. We've had a change order um, down by the by the sewage pump on Centertown Road. Um, we cut out some of the sidewalk there because if we extend the sidewalk beyond what, or according to the original plan. It would cover over the work that we're planning on doing now, so we just left, you know, the the meter and and so uh, we brought it back and ended it right there. Well, it ended up saving us three thousand seven hundred fifty-five dollars and forty cents, and so that's what this change order is about. So that was that much less that we have to pay the contractor. So. As you can see, it's already been signed, set in. We just need a motion to accept this change order as it was presented to us. I make a motion we accept the change order. Okay, second. second. All right, any discussion about it? We always take a. We always take a cut very happily, you know, in our cost. So. All in favor, up in the hand. Thank you. All right. Mr. Mayor, I will tell the council that um, I was forced to volunteer my time at the Sorehead shop last weekend. Okay. Well, everyone is out of town. But um, I, there were at least two different people who came in that Saturday to say how uh, pleased they were with the downtown sidewalks and how they looked. Nice. So okay. We have our lamp post. They're in. They're down here at the maintenance garage. Um... We are contracting with an installer. As soon as they get the prices where we can handle them, <laughs> uh, they'll begin installing. And they think they can put up the lamp post in about a day's time. So once they get started, they'll just 
pop right up. So um, that should happen in the next week or so. Okay, so. We don't have a grand lighting that night? Well, <laughs> I'm sure we'll have to have a, we'll, we'll have a test run somewhere along the way. Okay. All right. But anyway, that's where we, where we are with that. Uh, moving on to item B, surplus property. Uh, when we tore down the recycling center, they, they kept out, they were able to save, and I, I use the term save loosely, uh, six angle iron trusses that were part of the original highway department garage building. Unfortunately, when they tore it down, some of the trusses are bent, you know. But I'd like to declare them as surplus property. Um, here's a little disposition form that we've tried to create to make things a little easier declaring surplus property. Um, I'd like to declare them surplus property, and actually they're... They're trashed, but there is someone who would like to have them. I imagine. And so, uh, since they're part of the demolished building and they are warped, we haven't had them evaluated, which is a bad sign. <laughs> but to me, they're like garbage because they came out of a demolished building that, and they're men, so I don't. A uh, person's offered to pay us two hundred dollars for all six of them. Scrap metal while they were. You get more than that, yeah. Yeah, Welcome. exactly. You think so? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd have to Still cut them way. up. No and idea how big they are. The manpower on cutting them up and hauling them down there to the scrap may. Uh, how big are they? Uh, I've not measured them. They probably are. I'm going to guess 30 feet, 32 feet, feet, something like, like that. that. I'm guessing. I, had, I didn't measure them. Um, Is it two inch angle? Pardon? Is it two inch angle or uh, inch? It's two inch? They're, yeah, it's about that. Yeah. yeah. It's about what they are. And they're 30 feet a piece? Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. And you have how many? Six. Six. Talking about 180. Yeah. So I just need some direction on what to do with them. I mean, we we can advertise them and see what anybody's willing to bid on them, but it costs almost as much to advertise as it does to. <coughs> I would say. Cut torch, we we cut them. And just take them. You should only have to cut it in half, shouldn't you? You call all yeah. fifteen foot piece down here. Do we have an account with Gov Deals, right? Do what now? We have an account with Gov Deals. We got an account where you put this stuff on governmentdeals.com, and people bid on it for two weeks to. Yeah, we were just putting local papers of what we could do. I mean. Yeah, but you said you got to pay for an ad. Here, you don't have to pay very much on Gov Deals. It's like, for example, right. our old five crown bed that went for five fifty. Yeah. Beaverdam had an old five crown bed they put on the deals that had messed up. The old drive didn't work. Right. We got five fifty for ours. They got three thousand for theirs. Okay. That's the difference. Okay. Um, it might be something worth looking at. Sure. I think Marissa knows something about that gun deal. Well, whatever the council decides you want to do with it. Um, that's why it's basically a surplus property if you'd like to declare it surplus. And That's probably what that guy wanted to do with me. Cut him up. And it. I think he's going to use them for construction. As bent as they are, I don't know how he's going to do it. But it's up to you all what you want to do with it, you know. I entertain a motion from anybody <laughs> what you'd like to do. Cutting them in half is easily done. Yeah, they have been taken yeah. off. Just six pieces? Six pieces. Cut them in half. Now you got 12 pieces. Bundle them up. Either advertise them like Leroy said. Or, or put tax bids. Or take, yeah. Yeah. 
But we, but we need to weigh them. That way we can at least tell how much weight this metal is. Well, well. I'll just get somebody down at the recycle and come up and look at it and see yeah. what they're willing to give for them. Sure. If you tell them the length and the gauge, they'll tell I mean, I'm, I'm just the estimating weight. on the length. I, you mm -hmm. know, I've, I've just seen them from my truck just to count them and see how many there were. So how do you want me to proceed? Well, I'm all about making it, you know, surplus property, but I, I'd like to get top dollar for it, for the city, that's for yeah. sure. See what that guy down to the junkyard give for him. We can't run a bunch of ads that cost more than what we get out of it. Right. Well, it's like he says, we can put it on. That's free. On. Yeah. yeah. Put it on that and work. Are you going to cut them first or? No, just put them on there and let yeah, the guy know that, there. hey, they're going to be on here and he can bid on them or whatnot. Yeah, it's but measure them. Say, hey, look, someone's offering three, will you get three or one? You know, and yeah. get the most you can out of the guy. Right. Yeah. Okay, I put it on the government website for a couple of weeks and see what we get and contract him, see if what he'll give, and then take the better of the deal. Right. Okay. Right. Motion to that effect. I make a motion yeah. and we put them on the auction site. Oh, we need a motion to declare them surplus. Yeah. Do what now? We need a motion to declare them surplus before we okay. do anything. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion on that. Okay. I see. All right. <laughs> All in favor would be a surplus. Thank you. And now the now the motion about the procedure of getting rid of it. Put it on the government website first yeah. and then contact the, see which one ends up best. Correct. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Motion. I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second. Okay. In discussion? Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Okay, boat ramp electricity. KU is running a power line from a substation down here on Barnes Street, well, Barnes. And they're going right down Centertown Road and then cut across country. And they sent a diagram of where they're going to run it. All right, I didn't run this off of I can do it any good. But anyway, uh, this is the area that we own right here. Okay, this is down to boat ramp. It's where it is. Mm -hmm. This is that cultivated field before you get to the boat ramp. This is the tree line. They're going inside the tree line on the cultivated property, but they need 50-foot easement on both sides. Well, that 50-foot easement comes over to about our property line. So we just need a, a motion to allow them the easement down here for this power line to cross, not on us, but it's going to cross on the other people. It's just an easement for them. For It looks like there's going to be a couple of guy wires here that will just about come to the edge of our property. They'll be on our property to set those, the ends of the guy wire. I mean, I showed you how much intrusion there is on our property. And so what I would need then would be a motion that we grant them an easement across our property that's 50 feet. It, uh, now here at one end, it gets a little wider down here. But it's still not going. I mean, it's still in the tree line. It doesn't come onto our right. property at all. You know, pass that around. So what I would need then would be just a motion to allow us to grant them an easement. Who's this for? This for KU. Is it something if we develop the park down there more? Could we tap into that? Would that give us? It's a high. It's going to be high voltage. I'm afraid. I mean, of course, they put a transformer in there, but 
but we couldn't trade them that for some old lights out there. I was going to say, it'd be nice to have, yeah. Yeah. Tell them we let them have the evening if they pick into their evening. Since we have a park there. Cold. Well, we've got, what, we've got yeah, one light down there. Only one, I think. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, because you got that trail is what I'm thinking. Wouldn't it be better if it were kind of lit up? Reckon they do some trading. We'll talk to them. See what. Be worth a shot, wouldn't it? Yeah. If they'd set a pole there and set a transformer on that pole and. You can give us some light there. Then we just Should have we a, ever need it? It's yeah. certainly Having basically in. another street light to pay for. Yeah, something to pull off of. Yeah. Kind of disappointed in you. Miss Mary Bell is the only one who's festive today. I mean, we're getting this close to Halloween, and she's the only one wearing. I have two of these shirts, so <laughs> this is this week's shirt. <laughs> yeah, I think we ought to ask them if they. Or the easement just to set us a pole and transform yeah. there, and that we can run a light or two off of. Yep. I don't think they, don't the they have any problems. Another, another little bit of income for them. So I'll, yeah. But I do need the sure. motion to grant the easement, though, with that stipulation that we try to get a poll with. I'll make the motion. Transformer set. that we grant the easement with the stipulation that we have access to. Okay. And well, they need to pay for the lights by the own, don't they? Do what now? Would they pay for the lights if we got them? <laughs> Yeah. Then we'll buy the lights. Try. They furnish electricity. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Any more discussion? They wouldn't miss it. <laughs> uh, they wouldn't do that. They don't give us all the lights we got in Hartford. They don't give us a freebie. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we vote on it? Yeah, all in favor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next thing we have, D, is a community coordinator. I'll let Tara, address that to you. Well, you got three members of your, well, four, with Jerry. He unfortunately was out from our last EDC meeting. Good to see you tonight. Yeah. Um, at the EDC meeting, we had discussed about, we've got several members of the community, as well as I know here at the city, about wanting more activities, events, and some sort of liaison between the business and the residents in the, in the uh, city from both the festival and events and just general business matters that affect uh, consumers and residents. And we had discussed maybe coming to the council and recommending the position of a community coordinator, contracting with somebody that could put on at least uh, two events a year, we, th we said at, at a minimum, be that liaison between the business owners and, and other residents for doing things. And if somebody wants to set up something in Hartford, instead of always having to burden the mayor, having somebody else they could call and make sure they could run it by them, they could, that person could be the go-to between them and City Hall. There were a couple other, Dad, Mary Bell, do y'all remember some of the other points that were on that list? No, I had three, didn't we? I think so. Would they take care of the website? That's, we had talked about that to try and help whoever we have set up a website for the city. Mm -hmm. We had talked about having them on there? communicate uh, with whoever it is that we contact with. I think it was more important to the I don't think anybody in this room, including myself, maybe Dustin might be the most qualified. I don't want to pass judgment on anybody else, but to actually design, Tara maybe too, but to design a website, that's got to be something somebody pretty well does as a routine mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. But I think what we've always been deficit is, is do we have a contact person that can be the person they always make contact with that can gather the information and get it to that person designs the website? I think website design and maintenance is... is Once. Yeah, once the website's up and running, somebody still has to be able to upload the newest information, right? right. And I would think that they would be the yeah, best person to do that. otherwise it would be stale in six months. Exactly. And so what I we wanted to do from an EDC angle is bring this to the council. It, those are some of the, the some suggestions that we'd like to see in the position, but obviously you all would have some input as to what the actual duties would involve mm -hmm. um, to try and kind of come up with that. Now, what we came up with, too, is, is a, a part-time position. This is not the full-time 
city employee. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when they would report to George as to when, where, what, and how, and you know how she's progressing, and 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 or he. how she can wrangle all of you all in <laughs> when she needs to. Default pronoun. Don't look at me. <laughs> say wrangle. Another wrangle. When you when you say part time, how much time is part time? Well, I think that would be something that you all would or... have to say, or do you even yeah. want it to be a contract, not even an employee, but if you did a contract, you could say this is the set price and this is what we expect to get out of that price. I mean, I think that's something that this table needs to discuss. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we would love to see that position created or that, that role identified or that contract made so that we could actually do things in the city again because we've all known trying to find volunteers has been yeah. almost and, impossible. And another positive thing, if you get a person that is... Um, you know, the right to the person that enjoys doing it and they do a good job for the city. As council members change, as mayors change, and there's continuity there, the continuity stays from one from one council or one mayor to the next, mm -hmm. which is another positive thing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that I think that we should consider because when we look at how things have happened over the last two years, it's we, we haven't progressed much, and if, if we don't do something now, you know, we're not, people aren't going to come back. Right. You know, they're just not even going to think about Hartford doing anything, and they'll they'll seek so out there. Right. Merchants have something planned, you know, for November, but you can't rely upon them to always yeah. participate year in year out. You know, so mm -hmm. fortunately, we have some people that decide they want something this time. And yeah, well, this would kind of give you all a little control too over how those events and when they mm -hmm. are and how they're carried out too, though. Not just at the mercy of whoever decides to put it on that year. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the questions then is: Is this a permanent part time, or is it somebody that you contract for X number of events, or uh, how do you handle? It? You know, then the question becomes: What do you reimburse them for? What do you pay them? Uh, well, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can set up. You can set a fixed price contract, period. Sort of like start to get the key to the door. Or you, or you can set it up on an hourly basis based <coughs> on a fair wage hourly mm -hmm. for so many hours per year or month or if say if we have three events, you know, that's gonna require more hours than two events would. Now, the in-between stuff is going to take up additional hours, like the liaison and, and getting information from other people. Well, so website. it would be, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it would, it would depend on exactly how far you want to go on it. And I think the sad thing right now is, is that it's such a virgin area for us that we don't have any true experience mm -hmm. of what we need or how much work it's going to take up front to get it started. You would like to think six months a year down the road, the maintenance of that would be a lot less than, yeah. than what it would be at first. But we don't really have a good gauge to what to compare that against right now. I mean, it really is, for lack of a better term, a shot in the dark on, you know, if we put X dollar figures, if you put X dollar figures on it for X amount of time, I mean, for those of y'all who have been involved with the Harvest Festival in times past, it is a lot of work. And to do it right, it is a lot of work. But again, you know, if we're talk you're talking about website assistance, if you're talking about event assistance, if you're talking about, for lack of better terms, a central person that's always going to be a contact point for certain things of this nature, we don't really have a good track record for mm -hmm. that to know exactly what all is required. Well, one of the things, too, that came up at the EDC meeting is, um, you know, Beaver Dam does have their tourism commission, and they have Joe Beth Embry, but she's a full-time, and then, you know, they, she does, she, they do several events, they do the concerts, they do, like, you know, they have a full bump with the city and the tourism website and so she's a full-time position earning something we're not talking about something of that scale by any mm -hmm. means um but i think we do have something that we could develop with someone and it, it would definitely come in at a lot lower range but we just kind of need some input from the council on what you want yeah. and i think in the long, you know we need to think long term too right that it may it may grow into a full-time position and whomever or whatever type of person you get is going to need some lead time to start developing contacts and making, yeah. you know. You can't hire them and then 30 days later put on a message. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so. 
but I know that's been a big discussion from a lot of the community that I've heard, and I know they've come to Maryville, and I know Dad's heard a lot of it, and I'm sure the rest of you is, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do events again? When are y'all going to have something for the community? What, you know, and I and I think they miss the fall festival. I think you're right. The longer you wait, the more from it, the harder it is to yeah. make yeah. that, that yeah. interest. Right. Uh, I mean, I hate to say it, almost it's a leap of faith to come up with something. And then maybe if you could, if we can work out something with somebody, it may, as Mary Bell say, we don't know exactly how many hours. It may evolve to, you know, uh, 500 hours a year or 300 hours a year or, or 2080. Who knows? It, it, we don't know yet. But I think we have to do something. Well, it's like she said, right here at the very start, it's going to be a lot of hours. A lot more. Yeah, it is. I mean, more, in the the mid, more in the beginning and then around certain events and it will be That's maybe. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing else to get edu to get themselves educated on what, what we have and what the needs are and what the past history has been. That's right. And with the advent of this strategic plan would be a good time to start thinking in those, you know, in those terms too as far as what that position might lead into. Well, did y'all come up with a recommendation? <laughs> we, I don't think about the same time to do that. We get here, we we're kind of a, you know, we're kind of at a disadvantage because we don't, you know, we don't have, from an EDC standpoint, all we can do is make the recommendation as to the action this council takes. So yeah. we thought we wanted to put this out to you exactly. What did you want? Did you want a contract? Do you want a part-time employee? Do you want somebody that is on the payroll? Or do you just want to say, we're willing to put this much forward to this to event or this event, or here's a lump sum, what can this get us, that sort of thing? I don't. I don't know if it makes more sense yeah. to have a contract, but I'd like to see it somebody local that already has the contacts, right? Yeah. Like I don't. So if we went that route, then they don't necessarily have to be on the payroll. Um, but like at a minimum, I'm thinking maybe two events and the website up and running, and you know maybe two other forms of social media that's that's functioning um, within the first year. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think that's a fair place to start. Because um. I, I, you probably, I mean, right now you're not going to hit any events until maybe something in the spring. I think with the understanding, though, on the website part is whatever you pay this person isn't going to be the total cost of a website. It would just be coordinating something. Yeah, you. like yeah, we would okay. put yeah. together a proposal, and then like within right. that we would see, okay, what's the cost? There's going to be a, a maintenance cost of the website that the the vendor will take care of, but then there's going to be the that person would be responsible to update it. Yeah, and get to, the information to feed information into it. But we not use the and the Harvard website that we have, not the government one, but the other one. We could. That's what I'm saying. But it would. But like you said, it's just kind of setting dormant now. So you have to have somebody who actually can go in and yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. But as far as the cost of that, we're already <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. already. Uh, and I think what he's saying is not somebody to make that website. It's somebody just to kind of help keep it going. And yeah, it, yeah. Right. Like so, to be able, you need to be able to update your new events, put yes. new pictures in a in a folder to where it automatically grabs them and yeah. and loads them up and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Fine. Because none of us really know exactly the time it's going to require or what we need. I mean, if we can, if. And time, I know, is an issue because if we want to do something in spring, the clock is obviously ticking. But maybe if we can come up and, and work with the mayor and, and, and get council's approval for a job description based upon your guidelines right there. And then if we start running uh, an ad or whatever to look for somebody for do them, doing that, that might give us an opportunity to come up and maybe do a little research and find out what is a reasonable compensation for what our expectations are. Yeah. I have to be honest, I, I have no idea. What it would cost to do something like—is it five dollars an hour or is it fifty dollars an hour? I don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to venture to say somewhere, somewhere in that category of what we're talking about, but I don't have a clue. But we can go to school on somebody, other communities that may have done this of like sizes that's trying to do things. But I think you're right. We can create the world's best website right now. But it's like any vehicle—if you don't change the oil, rotate the tires, the tire, you don't have a quality product if you don't keep on top of it. And, I but think that if we can get somebody to place it now. I'm sorry. Does everybody here in Ohio County just use a Facebook page? Like I know no. this batch runs the Sheriff's Department's Facebook page, and it's pretty popular, and they seem to like it. I don't know if it caused them anything or not. Have you got, hey, <laughs> considering some hearings that have been going on just today and yesterday, 
I wouldn't depend on Facebook too much. Well, and I think mm. what, I think Facebook's it's important. Right I think in social media, I, I think social media and transparency and getting the word out that's a very important uh, aspect yeah. of it. But what you can do with the website is because when new businesses want to locate the yeah. community, the first place they go is they try to find that city's They're website, find that community, website. right? Mm. And they want to know what your what your rules are, what your ordinances are, what it costs to get a business license. How do I sign up for things like that? Yeah. And those are what needs to be on the yeah. website. Yeah. 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 People like people that do this professionally, they're. They know that websites are for professional attraction. Facebook right. is for just yeah. community interaction and research, mm -hmm. and Instagram is just to share pictures. Yeah. Like, and so if they use them right, like if they put together a proposal, they'll be able to map this out and basically say, "Hey, this is what I can provide for you." Provide the website. Well, now, are we Facebook talking page. about getting a website developer? At the same time, we're getting an events coordinator. Who? who I think it'd be well, separate. Yeah. I know it'd be yeah. separate, but but. I would like to see the events coordinator recommend, yes. hey, we should update the website because of this, this, and this, and this is who we could use, oh. and this is what the costs are going to okay. be, and then this is my role in managing it, you know? I think that it, these people know how to do this stuff. Yeah, I mean, right. It's somewhat of a symbiotic relationship, and, and to concur what you said, and I respect the fact that social media is a, can be a two-edged sword, it can be both not positive and negative. But, you know, just as we were looking at some things with planning and zoning, if businesses want to come in, if industry wants to come in, believe it or not, a lot of us may not like planning and zoning, but a business wants to know it, an industry wants to know it, and they want it because they want to know what the rules are. Right. They want to know what the guidelines are. They want to know if I invest $50 million or $20 million in a community, am I going to get bit in the backside six months later because I didn't, I didn't know what the rules are or you like implemented rules. So... There are positives to having professional websites that has all this information out there, and at least you go talk to XYZ Planning and Zoning or whatever the case may be to get this information. Well, plus the fact any more businesses, that's the first place they go is to a website. Yeah. To see what mm -hmm. what the entity has to offer. I mean, if you don't have a website... Way, you know, and I hate to think, last time I looked at the one on Hartford, it was... Yeah. I mean, it hadn't been updated. It's Nobody's out of there. date yeah. as I am, but I mean, it's you know. And I think that's what Kenny's getting bad is that you know, just because you build it, you've got to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've never had anybody to do that. Okay, let me have some direction. Make a motion. We move forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I make a motion that we uh, proceed to create whatever job description that is needed. Kenny, you want to set in on that? I mean, I don't, I don't well, care who sets in on it. pretty much said yeah. coordinate yeah. right now, coordinate two events. Yeah. Two, two events. And, and, and maintain the website. Website. And a liaison okay. position. And yeah. Liaison. Okay. okay. If we have those items down and uh, we want to advertise, I think the Economic Development Commission offered to pay for the cost of this person because we've got the funds in our little kitty right now. If we keep spending them, we're not going to have them, but I just love to spend money. Uh, and I think, really, the website's the same way. Yeah. I mean, if you all want to make a motion that we move forward to getting a full-fledged website tonight, I would be all for it. Yes. I would I'd, like to see what the person recommends. Yes, I, I do, I mean, too. I know. Yeah. I don't want to make a decision and then them have to change it. It's like, let's get the right person in there first. <clears throat> so you advertise for... Yeah, like a contracted like position. Yeah. yeah. Applications or proposals. Um, for community board. Yeah. That would involve the following. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They could suggest to what the but not salary or pay. But yes, pay. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they could suggest what salary or pay they would. Well, work. if they're putting together yes. a proposal, it should include yeah. Yeah. the yeah. cost. So want, I would I would entertain proposals first yeah. before we, we said, "Hey, let's put a position." And, and yeah. negotiate and to include mm -hmm. other things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So willing to pay ten dollars. All right, I motion. Yeah, is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any more discussion? We've discussed the heck out of it. <laughs> You haven't had near the discussion. We have. <laughs> all right, all in favor of that, signify by the uplifted hand. Okay. okay. 
I presume that the motion maker. Yes, I, 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 I can only do one thing. All right. right moving. Thank you. I believe it's a step forward. Uh, moving right along, uh, number F, schedule the November and December council meetings. November's always uh, coincides with Thanksgiving. December's is um, very close to Christmas, so we always reschedule those. Um, Thanksgiving is November the 28th, the fourth Thursday. Usually we move it up a week to the 21st, the Thursday before that Thursday. Uh, same thing is true about the Christmas. Christmas meeting or the meeting in December would come on the 26th. Uh, moving it up would be the 19th, but uh, you all can move it wherever you want to. So. I'll entertain a motion about moving the November and December meetings. Now, these will be special call meetings. So whatever agenda is published, that's the only thing you, we'll be able to discuss at those meetings. Are you, are you going to have a Christmas dinner or anything like that? We just meet well, we yeah, we used to do the Friday before. The December, what we have okay. usually do that's the what first I'm Friday of December, but which is not The first time. Friday. Of December. Well, that's we don't have to do it, and I'm just saying that's. I thought it was like closer to the normal time. There's a Friday the 13th of December. Right. I thought it was the 20th that we would. Yeah, remember. but we normally do it here. The reason they did that was to get your hand out there. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> just, We've got a meeting right here on this. <laughs> They did at the end of the time, and that's why they always had it on the first Friday of December. I'm just saying what well, we used to do, however you want to do it. Y'all can do it any way you want to, and we'll, we'll adjust. <laughs> okay. Well, you tell us. I mean, I mean uh, let's take the November meeting first. Uh, our normal motion. meeting day would be the 28th. If we move it up a week to the 21st. Uh, that would be the Thursday before, be the third Thursday. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to move the November meeting. Okay. All right. 21st. Any discussion? All in favor of moving it to 21st? All right, thank you. Now, that December. That one's still at 5 p.m., correct? Yes, it'll be okay. 5 p.m. Okay, December. Yes. We normally have a Christmas dinner and our meeting right after or shortly thereafter the the dinner uh what she's saying is that that's when we give away the notice that we've they've got their longevity award in their account and i give them a present to such as it is um and you think it needs to be the first Friday? No, I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first Friday is a is on the sixth. Okay, down here is the fourth Thursday. Yeah, so to the thirteenth. Thirteenth again? Does it have to do it be on the thirteenth? No. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but. That's just how it's been. You used to eat at 11, and then they have the council meeting at 1. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but that's how it is. Or, the, I mean, if you want to come back after the dinner and have the council meeting at 5 o'clock on no, no, no. some, some other know. night. I mean, you can come to the dinner, too. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could wear the same thing. You don't have to clean up again. <laughs> Mary Bell, Mary Bell likes to take a nice nap after a big But I mean, you could have the dinner I'm one saying. day and then two weeks later have your council meeting. You could well, do that. Well, I know that, but I, may, I ask, are you going to have a Christmas dinner? Yes, And you will. said yes. yes. Well, what day will it be? This is whatever day you'd all decide. Oh, well, all right. Well, How's the 13th? To Tomorrow. Good? Okay. All right. Well, 13th. I'll Friday make a motion 13th. to move right. the December meeting to the 13th. I like it. I'll and it'll be yeah, around one o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll the dinner's back 11. from Hawkins. The dinner be eleven. Pardon? We'll be getting back from Hawkinsville from that meeting at the twelfth. A 
December. December the 12th? Yeah. It's the 11th and the 12th in Hopkinsville. So you'll be back on the 13th? Be back. Mm. I hope we do. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> they don't keep us. Oh, no, keep you two up down. <laughs> okay. You going? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, any more discussion? It's December 13th, right? Yeah. Dinner, the lunch will be at 11, our meeting will be at 1. Yeah. I'm in the motion. Okay. Second. All right. Is there any more discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Thank you, Terry. No, yeah. I'm going to ask you, Dad. Code enforcement. Oh, I put my notes on the wrong, <coughs> wrong line there. Yeah, code enforcement officer. Uh, Nathan's had, uh, he's having a job change, and so he's having to resign as code enforcement officer. Um, he's given us two weeks. We're already into that two weeks. In fact, he's probably already about done with it. And he's going to give you to the end of the month. Okay. Yeah. So we're needing another code enforcement officer. Um, I put this out here just as information for you to offer up suggestions as to possibilities for code enforcement officer. It is a part-time job. You can't have it. No, I got some better. <laughs> okay, just submit that, and we'll we'll interview and pursue. Okay, um, his part time job would pay two hundred a month for it, and what is that? Uh, Twenty hours a month. <coughs> there's that many. It's just uh, there's X number of hours. I can't remember what they are. I thought I thought it was twenty. <coughs> I don't get to see that check, so I don't okay. know. I'm going to just tell him to come talk to George. Yeah. <laughs> if they're interested. <laughs> talk, talk to Patty. Right. Yeah. No, come talk to me and we'll get things ironed out. Uh, we'll make it straight. But it is a set number of hours per month, uh, and <coughs> it is a set pay of $200 a month. So uh, somebody's retired, somebody's looking for a little extra cash for free time. They got some spare time, or they don't have to do it during the day. They can do it at night. They I think it's, it's it's like up to the however many hours up to not to exceed that, right? Like yeah. to exceed like twenty hours or something. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Anyway, that's just give me the names and we'll pursue them. All right. Uh, Overlook that one. Okay. Uh, G, the water management finance meeting, Bowling Green, the, there's a, the Burn River Area Development District is sponsoring a workshop, two and a half hour workshop starting at 530. They'll provide dinner, everything's free. If you're interested in it, uh, it's November the 12th starting at 530 and I can register you for that if you'll just give me uh, See, I need your uh, I need your email address, uh, phone number, and um, I think I can come up with everything else to register. What's this meeting? It's about water management and finance. It's what it is. How do you? And this is like I said. So, University of North Carolina is going to present this. They've done uh, some research and they've got a program of helping. Uh, water producing entities uh, how to manage and maximize and how to deal with the finances of it. Uh, I don't know if we can deal with the finances because I don't know if we can charge any more than what we're charging right now, you know, but uh, it is informational. It's two and a half hours of credit, so uh, uh, if you're interested in it, We'll get a bus and take a bunch of people down. So just let me know. And like I said, what I do need is to register you, as, or you, I can send you the email and you can register yourself. But anyway, just let me know. Do you guys? Do you have anybody going from the city? Leon. Leon's Leon and I are going down there. All right. 
Uh, yeah. You've got, i got all kinds of notes. Okay. I was going to say, I ran out of That's numbers here. I ran out of letters here. Yeah. Um, all right. H is not on there. <laughs> H is, uh, this is, would be the first reading for Ordinance 2019-10, Ordinance Imposing Parking Restrictions on Portions of West Union Street. Uh, what we're talking about is in front of the Christian Care Center. Um, According to the Department of Highways, uh, to have parking on West Union Street from the center line to the side must be 20 feet. 12 feet for a travel lane, 8 feet for a parking lane. When I measure the one in front of Christian Care, it's 16 feet to the sidewalk. Okay. So what that does is that creates an unsafe situation if we allow parking on there. Uh, they've asked if we'd make it a, just a loading zone. Uh, I don't even think we could do that legally because there's not enough room there for a loading zone. What we'll just have to do is let UPS do what they do now and just pull up anywhere they want to and stop anywhere they want to and deliver anywhere they want to. So, uh, But we'd have to, and it's also a safety factor there, people parking in front of Christian Care or parking beside of uh, Lycan's printing building, uh, they create uh, a vision obstruction for traffic for people coming out of our designated parking lot. <coughs> so it is a safety hazard. Um, but anyway, this is what you were... You all made a motion last time. This is just the first reading for it. So if somebody would uh, read read that first. Jerry, you want to read that for us, please? How much of it you want to read? Just the, the heavy dark at the top. City of Hartford, Kentucky, Ordinance 2019-10, an ordinance imposing parking restrictions on portions of West Union Street in downtown Hartford. All right, so that'll be the first reading. We'll have the second reading next month. Okay. Okay. Uh, now for I. <laughs> As you know, we've uh, declared that old tanker for the fire department is surplus property. We sold it. Um, it was unsafe to take out on the road. Uh, it was a 91 model. That, uh, the frame was rusting on it, becoming a uh, liability for us. So we sold it, but do we still need a tanker, especially for fires that are outside the city? Inside the city is not utilized that much because we have access to hydrants pretty, pretty regularly. You know, there's a lot of hydrants that we use. But this would be a vehicle that they use for outside the city. Um, and there's enough water in this tanker that besides what they carry in the pumper truck and this tanker truck, they usually have enough water to fight any house fire. So it, it does away with the pumper truck having to go up to the nearest hydrant, which may be five miles down the road, and filling up again and coming back is what it does. And so anyway, uh, we've been looking at fire trucks, tankers. Uh, I'll start with the top end and work my way down. Okay. <laughs> um, Finley Fire, which is some of our firemen work for Finley Fire. We get a lot of our supplies from them. Has a truck on their lot right now ready to go and if I remember right it was 200 it's either 240 or 266 thousand dollars okay so I told them I said let's look around see what we can find and they did some looking around finally and found a company that had uh, that had a 20 2020 truck. Uh, it was new, but it was like $177,000. So 
So looking at that website, uh, they have some other trucks on there. And looking around, I found a very similar truck. It's a 2017, and it was, but it was brand new. It had never been driven, and it was 158,000. So I called about it, and uh, this is in Canada. So I learned some French on my way <laughs> through the call. But anyway, moving right along, um, that truck had already been. Sold since uh, it been put since before I called to a city down in Texas. But talking to the man, he said he had other trucks. He said he had a 2017 just like that one that only had 300 miles on it. And what these are, they're they're used trucks. <coughs> That's 2017. And what they do is they strip them down, uh, redo the frame on it, repaint it, undercoat it, all that kind of stuff, and they put a new tank on it. So it's basically a used truck with a new tank. Uh, that one was, well, I just got the, actually he sent me three today, he sent me three copies, and I got somewhere. 2017 Freightliner, a 2016 International, and a 2013 International. Okay. Of course, it would have to be, they can rig them up the way that our fire department would specify this is what we need. I mean, this is basic tank, and they're going to add on to this basic tank. Um, the 2017 Freightliner. Uh, is a hundred forty-eight, little over one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. The twenty sixteen international is almost one hundred forty-five thousand, and the twenty thirteen international is about one hundred thirty-two thousand. Now, I went to the bank to check on financing. Um, we can get financing at five and a half percent for five years. Our payments would be somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty-five thousand a year. Okay, so I contacted Grad. They loaned money out, but they didn't have enough money. Their their stock is depleted. They're down to about six thousand dollars, I think. And so uh, they suggested going through the rural development part of the uh, Federal Agricultural Department of Agriculture. So I contacted them. They, if we time we go through all the paperwork, will give us a 35% grant. In other words, 35% of that money would be given to us. And the balance would be at 3% fixed rate for however many years. I don't know how we had talked about a number of years. I just got the forms in today. I believe it's today or yesterday one. Anyway, I just got those forms in. So um, I want to talk to the fire department and see what kind of a recommendation that they've got to bring to you. I know what they're going to say. We want the newest one, you know. Uh, but whether it's a Freightliner or the International what kind of preference they've got. Uh, these are tandem axle trucks. The, the, the tank holds 3,600 gallons, uh, which, like I said, is more than enough water to fight any house fire along with the pumper supply. So I'm just giving you that information right now to give you kind of a heads up for you to be thinking about this. If you've got a better solution, I'm very much open to it. Uh, you know, but from two hundred sixty-six thousand dollars down to one hundred forty-five, one hundred fifty, something like that, is a big jump. Uh, it's a lot better than the ninety-one white that we had GMC that we had that was rusted apart. So, 
anyway, that's just mostly information. If you want to discuss it or see anything about the specs, you know, I'll, I'll be glad to share that with you. Mr. Mayor, may I ask a question? Yes. How much money does the county give the city of Hartford for fire support? Um, how much money does the county, county give us the fire department? Fire support? State gives us eleven thousand, and the county. County's not always the same, I don't think, is it's it? It's not, and what the county gives us now, they are netting against the insurance the information we've been trying to get from them that we've yeah. not been able to obtain. So how much are, how much are we collecting for fire dues outside the city limits? Somewhere around the lower 30s. I don't know, outside the city? I don't know, I have a, In total, we collect somewhere around 31000 31000 from the county, out in the county? No, that's everybody. Well, I mean, no. I don't pay for our dues because I live in the city. I, I know, but... So uh, what we take in, which is outside city limits, is somewhere in the lower 30s. But this is a tanker for not really the city limits for the county. Uh, well, I mean, they could use it here in the city, yeah, but it's just for, for the fire department's use wherever they deem deem it best, you know, when they need it, when they think they'll need it. Um, Just like if they had a, a big, huge fire and they had to bring in other fire departments, they may not have access to the hydrants, you know, then they would pull this tanker right. in there and use it even here in the city. I mean, my biggest concern is the taxpayers. I, I, I agree everybody needs to have some type of fire, fire uh, suppression. Uh, but my concern is, is that why would the residents of Hartford be putting the line through the bill. That's why I was asking if there was enough income from outside the county, outside the city, to help support the indebtedness on that. Does Beaver Dam have the same thing? Did they do the same thing? I'm pretty sure they did. I don't know for sure. But I think they I think they would probably have a tank or two. They don't have a department outside somebody, the city though, do they? We talk to Sam Small and maybe get some money from the fiscal court. That's what I think. Since it's yeah. for them. You know. I think we, they definitely need to talk to the district court, too, because I don't think our city should have to supply Well, you know, we've, we've got a station out here, you know, on Hoover Hill to yep. try to help facilitate fires in that part of the county. And, um, I mean, it, it, it would make sense if it could be self-sufficient from the dues and the, uh, what you, and the support from the county to cover the expense, it makes, it makes sense, but if it has to be subsidized by the taxpayers, right. that's a little, uh, it's a little tough. George, have you looked into, or every one of these coal mines around has got a tanker truck that they water the roads with, mm -hmm. and they haul quite a bit of water. Yep, it's got to have, it's got to be equipped with a pump, it's going to have to have all kinds of hose connections on it, you know, for the fit with the fire hose connector to the trucks. There'd be a lot of a, a lot of adjustments. A lot of rigging made. on yeah. it would have to be but done, you, you know. Get, I think you, it should be enough of them around somewhere that you could get pretty cheap. It wouldn't take long to save enough money putting fittings on it. Yeah. I'll look try to look into that and see what I'm not sure who I would contact uh, about that, but I'll, I'll try to find out. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I get a notice from um, Grad. They have to submit to the transportation cabinet every year. Well, this year it's changed a little bit. They have to submit uh, a list of all the roads, but this year they're being uh, asked to submit a list of not only county roads, but city streets as well. So I received a list of city streets and they want to know if there's any additions or changes and we've had uh, two streets to put on the list well actually one street to put on the list that's our old Russell Court so I had to measure it and 
But then they also wanted to know where Marble Court was, even though it's a private street. They already knew where Victoria Drive and Violet Lane were, their private streets. Uh, so anyway, once these are submitted to the Transportation Cabinet, they'll send us back a copy of all of the streets that we submitted, and then we'll have to have a resolution. But um, all these had to be done by November the 8th, which is, it's already been done. And then they'll send us back, a, and we'll, we'll have to have a resolution at the next meeting. So, I mean, that's just information as well. Um, Violet is a private street? It's one that the city doesn't maintain. Oh, really? Like Marble Court, you know where that is? No, never. Okay, heard. that's uh, Barry and Lane Klaus's mm. duplexes up there by Ellis mm. Park. Mm. Okay, they put in a street yeah. for those duplexes. That's not a city street. Oh. That's their private lane. Out here at Peyton mm. Place, those streets are, Bobby Crawford maintains those. City doesn't maintain those. They're not city streets. Really? Uh -uh. Bet you the residents don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. it's just like when we did our Russell, when we did our Russell Court, uh -huh. that you know it was Brushy Creek <laughs> Apartments. Yeah. That's the only de designation for that street, and it was a private street. It was not a city street until we accepted it as a city street and named it. Right? Mm. Remember, we did that at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. That made it a city street, and when we accepted responsibility for maintaining mm -hmm. it, but those others we haven't accepted. They've never been submitted for us, even. <laughs> is that taking and place in the city limits? It is. Yep. Mm -hmm. They pay taxes, but it's still not a city street. Huh? Still not a city street. No. The landowner has to dedicate it to the city. Mm -hmm. The city has to accept it. And they don't know. They don't know it's not city streets. They think it's city streets. Yeah. So They'd like for us to go ahead and finish paving the street, you know, with that final uh -huh. uh, yeah. surface. It's because it's got the base down, but it doesn't have the final pavement surface. And they, I was out there measuring the other day because we got to submit a measurement to these, and they thought we were measuring it because we were going to pave it. <laughs> well, you knew they had a hole come in it, and I thought the city repaired it all. No, we helped, we helped, I think, with some of the drainage, I think, was what it was, I believe. I'm not sure what they did. But, like, uh, they've had drainage problems out there. And storm never drains have collapsed and stuff like that, but they've got to repair them themselves. When they came to planning and zoning, to get that approved. Okay. We tried not to let them build in that swamp land. Uh, I've got one last thing. Uh, Balefield, our good proprietor for our landfill, is having Customer Appreciation Day October the 29th, which is next Tuesday from 11 to 1. They're serving hot dogs and hamburgers. If you'd like to go down there and be appreciated, you're welcome. At the landfill? At the landfill oh, office. Oh, <laughs> Not at the landfill, at the landfill <laughs> office, sir. I thought maybe it's going to be a free day. <laughs> Can we go up on top of you? I'll pose. <laughs> <laughs> Scrounge around, see what you find. Anyway, I want to extend to you that invitation from Balefield so that you can get a free hot dog, hamburger, or free drinks, or whatever, and feel appreciated. Wage water providing the drinks. We've never had a, yeah. we've never had a contract with Balefield all these years, and there's a new, uh, new owner for Balefield, and so they came and I met him, Bobby Oldham is the manager down there, and he asked me, he said, uh, we have a contract with you? And I said, well, I've never seen one. I don't come find out we didn't have a contract. So they sent us a contract, now we have a contract with, with Balefield after all these years that we've been paying a bill to them for what they've sent us. So. Anyway, that's all I have. So, uh, well, I have, I have been asked to pass this around. Uh, this is from Timothy Moss, and he said he'd like for the council to have a look at this, so good luck with it. While they're looking at that, we also need to go. Yeah, we can. While you're, while you're looking at that, um, 
our insurance carrier has brought uh, this option to you for a life insurance policy. Um, they presented to our employees the other day and they've asked that uh, we also let you know about it. Uh, it's, it's, you have to either accept or decline. We'll have to do one or the other. So how do, how do they go about accepting or declining? I have to sign a form. The orange thing tells the uh, when she walks, she'll be here. Okay. She'll be here Monday from 9 to 1. Uh, if you can't make it, we'll get you a, a, whatever it is, either an application or a waiver for you to sign. Just Did the city agree to pay 50% what that was. Thanks. Something like that. Uh, like if we take a policy out, you're going to take 50% from the city and then 50% from us. You're dreaming. Uh, I don't know when to take you serious or not. <laughs> because I looked at it and honestly, the deals that we get in the mail, they send you to you. Yeah. You get better deals through them than you do through this week. But it's guarantee issue for those that have uh, health issues where that you can't get life insurance and other means you can on that. Okay, that's for your information. Take it home, look at it. Should be here Monday, and if you're not here, we'll get a, either an application or a waiver or both, and make those available to you. So, <coughs> all right. Anybody have anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, the land in between me and my church. The land on Walker. Oh, I want to find. You know where he's talking about? about? I have an idea. Yes. Yeah. I need to do something about that. I need to put a private fence up. I need to do something fast. Because <laughs> yeah. I need to cut that. I want to get it cut and get a blacktop and rocks down there. Are we talking about the tiny little portion the city has? Or are we yeah, talking about the neighbor? 600 yeah. of an acre. Okay. Holler at me next week and I'll, I'll see what I can find out on that. I want to get Because there's some title issues I know on the adjacent tract. Okay. So we'll have to look at it. All right. Okay, does anybody else have anything? Make a motion. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me see if anybody out in the audience. I got I'm to say something, please. Okay. First of all, I came back in May or June, I think, and talked to you guys about parking, and you said you were going to do two-hour parking on Center Street. Well, we haven't seen any of signs or anything yet, so I wanted to ask about that, because that has not been... It is to our parking. If, if the signs aren't up, I'll have Jason put one up. We put, he's put up the 15 minute. Well, there's actually two 15 minutes. One is close to the end of the curb and another one down the poster. But yeah, we've got the 15 minute signs up, but we didn't, evidently he didn't get the two hour parking Right, signs up. and so, you know, no one knows that that's... Two hours. Uh, two okay. hours down there so I was just checking yeah. because I know you all had said right. something at that meeting yes, that you were going to do that and that hadn't hadn't occurred yeah. yet so that's what orange. I was checking on I know we've got, it on, for, we've got it on the east you did an ordinance for two hours on both sides and 15 on the front now there's another 15 minute though down on the corner I don't remember do, that wasn't yeah that was what we did if whenever that other that other business was in there with Johnson Mr. Johnson. Was it by ordinance? Yeah, I think it was, wasn't it? Were you speaking of what? Was it by ordinance or just? In front of the bakery, a 15 minute parking in front of the bakery? On down further, we had one. I don't know if it was by ordinance, but we did put it up. Okay. We'll get it up in the morning. Because well, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't remember doing that. Because I went to Bowling Road and brought the sign back. I know what happened. Several years. Yeah. It's been several months. Right. And I knew right. that you had yes, said We're that. Okay. And also, I know that um, at 
another meeting, I came in and I was asking about the police department and things like that. And Mr. Embry here, he came down and talked to me, and I was very glad that he did. He came in and he told me that a lot of their uh, uh, vests and back, uh, backup weapons and things were uh, donated to them or uh, whatever from their uh, drug uh, drug course, band. you drug know, band. that they do with them. So that was good to know, and I'm very glad that, you know, we're on top of the drug enforcement yeah. and everything. So I appreciated that. And we went over some of the different points that, you know, we discussed. And, you know, I, I wanted to tell him that I, I appreciate him coming in. Um, I've done some research, however, on some of the things that I had some questions about and that I asked Mr. Embry, and he, you know, told me some of the things. And uh, one of them was about, like, you know, seatbelts and things like that. And he said that that was a, some kind of a, uh, what, what did you call it, Mr. Embry? Something, Beaver Dam and the Sheriff's Department got money for that because the state. Oh, yeah, they participate in the uh, Kentucky Highway Governor's Award Program. Right, but I did some research on that, and that's for everyone so everybody can get money for that not just beaver dam and the sheriff's no, department they don't do the mini grants they used to do what they call a mini grant where for like when they do drives over get pulled over we could do that mini grant and the officers could come in they would give us so much money for them to work overtime and write so many tickets for like dui arrest warrants, whatever traffic stops basically and you could get money but now they don't do the mini grant anymore. So now the only way you can do it is to agree to join the whole year thing. And that means your officers like Beaverdale, like they do, they got so many hours every year that their officers got to work overtime, right? And then they get a, I think they get a $5,000 grant or um, they get $5,000 in overtime money. So if their officers can come in and work overtime, two hours either before the shift or after the shift, and they don't do anything but pull people over and write tickets, okay? We don't participate in that because it's just too much paperwork. You gotta keep up with all that stuff. Somebody has to annotate every little ticket that you write. You gotta make sure all the officers do it. And my officers don't wanna work overtime. And they don't have to. All right, I'm just I'm I'm just thinking here because you said you you don't write seatbelt tickets and except for maybe young drivers, but I thought our law says it's a law to right. wear your seatbelt, and so if it's the law, your job is to uphold the law. Am I incorrect? Right, but some things it doesn't say I shall write. It says I may write. But it's against some the law. Laws, some laws say that you shall do something that you might have to run more by the court to Something to say you may. Right? So it's up to my discretion. As far as writing seatbelt tickets, what I'm trying to say, what I was trying to say to you, we don't write a whole lot of seatbelt tickets around here. It's because, honestly, most people wear the seatbelts. But if you don't, you don't have to worry about it. No, you can get pulled over. That's a reason to stop. You can get, but we're not getting. That's because you told me that you don't do that. No, I'm just trying to think of ways that the city can do no it. Belt tickets, but we have written, we have officers that, that have written no seatbelt tickets. But I me personally, that's just my personal opinion. That's my personal choice. If you, if I pull you over and you don't have your seatbelt on, but everything else is fine. You got a 50 50 chance with me whether I write you that ticket. It's just like if I pull somebody Sounds more like a 90 10. Got, somebody's going down the road and they got one headlight and it's at night. They got it on. By law, you got to have two. I pull them over and it, it turns out, well, uh, they had a tail light out or a headlight out or they didn't immediately have proof of their insurance. Right? I don't have to charge them with all that. I can charge them with what I basically want to charge them with. 
you know, with the You mean the state uh, laws in our, our state laws? You have the option as an individual this who person, opposes yeah. state laws no. that you decide which ones you enforce. No. That's, That's what, what you just said. All. I'm saying suit belts. Okay. No, that involved a tail light, a headlight, and some more things. So it's off seat belts now. It's everything. No. Yeah, it is. Well, that's not how that's what you just across, said. Okay. What I'm saying is just because somebody could stop, say, for speeding, we can give a warning. We don't have to write them a ticket. All right? We even have written warnings. We have verbal warnings. We don't necessarily have to write them a ticket. They violated the speed limit. So are you all saying you want us to enforce every law and not... I'm just saying that it would be nice if we had some accountability because we've got people down here who are coming out one-way streets, I mean, three, four times a day, and they're not watching. And people coming this way, people walking. And, and you told me that. And I told you that. And, and you, you told you know what you told me? Over here in front of the library on Main Street watching for stuff like that? I do it probably almost every other day for 30 minutes. And I haven't caught nobody coming Which up is long. great because you're a presence. You shouldn't catch anyone. That's what I'm saying. If we had a presence there, it won't happen. Because you told me when I brought that up that same thing. You had people calling on Oakwood Drive that people were speeding. But you would send a car out there. And when nobody was speeding, you all left. Well, you were a presence. So no one did it. Which was great. And that's what we want. Well, if that, that's just all I'm asking. Be present when there's one of you out, you can only be present so many places at one time. On the center street, an observation: if you go down there in front of the old post office, the King Billing office, there is a one-way sign, but it's twisted and turned. Yeah, and I told Jason about it two weeks ago. Yeah, and it, it, I think it was correct. So, I mean, honestly, and of course, you know, being here for so many years, just twist it back. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're coming up either in front of the Apartments that where Jack Chambers used to live, and and or coming down by that way, you could go and not even see it if you're not familiar with the area. I mean, you're right. That that sign has to be turned, but it is a concern. Uh, I mean, for so many years I practiced at Kings. Now that we have this, the business downtown, you do see a lot of people going the wrong the wrong way on one way, and it is a danger for pedestrians as they're crossing. But I think that sign could help. But um, I mean. I understand at times we may only have one or two officers. Our biggest concern is, as a resident of the city of Hartford, as a taxpayer in the city of Hartford, is there a presence? Is, you know, I've been pulled over doing 80, 80, 85 mile an hour and they'll write it down or they may not even give me a ticket to your warning. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate that. But I do think that there's, I'm not asking somebody to be Barney Fight, but I do think that we need to ask people to be a little bit more diligent sometimes about some of the, some of the laws and some of the, violations that we see go on in the community. Uh, but again, I know the Hartford may only have one officer at a time, but a presence can be a great deterrent. And I think that's what one, one thing we'd like to see happen. And then I know you said something to me about you didn't have a secretary. And so when, you know, we wanted reports like, you know, I open the paper and see yeah. reports from all these others, but we don't see hardly anything from Hartford. And I know the people in Hartford aren't perfect. And so I asked you about that, and you said, you know, you didn't have a secretary. The girls here made it clear they're not your secretary and that you are not a very good typist. But all I have to say about that is I, I hate it for you, but when you took on the job as chief of police, that's part of your well, job description. And I plan on doing that, putting that in there once a month. Okay. And... You know, the last one that we put in there, we had a little problems putting it in there because it took three weeks for it to get in there. Okay. But that's not a problem. This, the deadline is Tuesday at 12 o'clock. So usually on Friday or Monday, I send everything, fax it to them once a month. And it should be in the paper this time. You know. I'm just. And I understand what you're saying. I, People are I not happy so. with the police department. <laughs> Sometimes the police department's not happy too. They're not well, happy with the mayor either, so. 
Yeah. Well, they're never yeah. happy. I and it's like the two-hour parking on Center Street. I didn't know anything about it. Well, that's why I asked them about the signs because, yeah. and nobody else knows yet either about that because it's not there. Yeah. But I it have, is up on two thirty-one. When you told me about the one way, the people coming out the wrong way, I sat up here at the very first spot right before Washington, and I sat there. And that's Why? great. So, you know, people see that there's right. a presence, and that's what we want is for people to see there's a presence. If they see that, then they don't do it, which is, you know, what we what we want. So when we set the police truck up there. I mean, sometimes yeah, we put the car up there. When y'all were running, we set that we truck up there. Because you know. Yeah, right, and sometimes just that alone is a deterrent, you know, and that that helps a lot. So that's, you know, I was just thinking over some of the answers that you gave me, and I'm just like, well, maybe we could do this, or maybe we could do that, and that would help things, you know. At least it would show that you're a presence here in downtown Hartford, and that's what, that, that's all I want, is just to see my tax dollars working and for people to not be going the wrong way and you know trying to, I know they don't try to run someone over but you know when someone's walking you're like whoa right I understand to be fair somebody did try to run over my brother one day and actually hit him with his car that wasn't your fault <laughs> so I will say he was crossing the street wow. yeah and so that's just you know one of my concerns Thank there you, Sherry. No, so, but, you know, I appreciate you coming in and talking to me and addressing some of my issues. You know, I was just doing some research and that's... Your suggestions are more of So... Mr. Mayor, on a positive note, the EDC studio, EDC committee came several months ago and did a presentation about looking at city taxes and the council overwhelmingly supported that. And all of us have got a tax bill this year. It's all that. Amen. And I want to personally thank the city of Hartford for taking that effort. I, I, I mentioned the word leap of faith a while ago. That truly was a leap of faith. And I know it does potentially put the city in a little bit of a bind as far as finances are concerned. But I've heard a lot of positive. That might be one of the most positive things that I've heard complimentary about the city. It's kind of unusual for say to do that. Very seldom do you see any government entity lower taxes. And that was a very positive move. Mm -hmm. Now, and not just going to say it may not create some hardships, but I can tell you personally as a citizen, I want to thank the city of the city Hartford. I'm hoping that that's going to be the one of the first of several mm -hmm. if things pan out. I make a motion we adjourn. Does anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> yeah, I do. Second. <laughs> you find out the weight limit on our streets? Oh. There's nobody that knows what the weight limits are on these streets. The only one I've seen is the one on the factory, I guess. Well, that's just because yeah. it was... Uh...